Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and you know, I do printer reviews here on this channel, and one of the interesting things I've been thinking about is how to do them better. And it's hard to compare one printer to another in an objective manner. And I'm, I was trying to think, what would be a good way to initially compare printers? And I think, I got it. It struck me while I was in the supermarket and I was browsing energy drinks and there's all sorts of different brands of energy drinks and sizes of energy drinks and flavors of energy drinks and for the store that I was at, in order for you to compare these one to another, brand versus brand versus size versus size, is a common metric among the drinks and that is the fluid ounce. So you look at an 8.4 ounce Red Bull can and you compare that to a 12 ounce Monster Energy Drink can, how do you really compare those equally? One of the ways is with the fluid ounce, and the supermarket next to the price puts the price per fluid ounce, and that gives you not the complete picture, but it gives you an initial indication of how to stack up, line, and judge soft drinks, energy drinks, protein shakes, you name it. So why don't we find the fluid ounce of the 3D printing world? You know, we're talking about 3D printing, right? And it's additive manufacturing. All 3D printers have some way of adding a material within a build volume. So why don't we talk about the price per build volume when we talk about comparing 3D printers? To find the build volume, uh, most 3D printers use millimeters. And so we can get the cubic millimeter representation of the build volume by multiplying X and Y and Z. We're gonna end up with a really large number, so let's divide that by a thousand to give us cubic centimeters, and then let's take the retail price of the 3D printer and divide that by the number. And that should give you the price per cubic centimeter of build volume. X, Y, and Z only really describes the square box sized build volumes, what about delta printers? Don't worry, we got you covered. Just like in math from the sixth grade, you need to find the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. So we have the diameter, we cut it in half to get the radius, and then we square that and we multiply that by pi. Then we multiply that number by the height of that cylinder, and you have the build volume for a delta 3D printer. Of course, you divide that into the retail price for the 3D printer and you're left with the price per cubic centimeter. All right, we have our theory. The price per cubic centimeter is a way to initially compare 3D printers. Now let's put it to the test. Let's talk about the BCN 3D Sigma R17 versus the Zix Plus 3D printer. The Sigma is 21 cents per cubic centimeter and the Zix is 19 cents per cubic centimeter. The Sigma itself has a price tag nearly $500 more than the Zix, but it also has nearly 1,500 cubic centimeters more in its build volume. So using the price per cubic centimeter, you knew that the Sigma and the Zix were close as far as the build volume and the price you're paying for that build volume. Then once you get the list of features for these printers and you compare those one-to-one -one and you find out the total price and how much your budget is, then you actually can make a more informed decision. Let's test this versus a large format 3D printer versus a small format 3D printer. The Ultimaker 3 is 38 cents per cubic centimeter of build volume, whereas the Lulzbot Mini is 34 cents per cubic centimeter of build volume. The Ultimaker 3 is almost three times the price of the Lulzbot Mini. The Ultimaker 3 build volume is nearly 5,600 cubic centimeters larger. Okay, let's play with these numbers. This is really interesting because the Lulzbot Mini and the Ultimaker 3 are close in price per cubic centimeter. And the Ultimaker 3 itself is a lot more expensive than the Lulzbot, but at the same time, it does offer a lot larger build volume. So then it's up to you to compare the features and whether or not you have the budget to afford the larger printer. But it's still interesting because these printers are close in the price of their build volume. So it really does go to the feature set and whether or not you can budget for a more expensive 3D printer. Well, now we can compare printer types. So let's compare a Delta printer versus a Cartesian printer. The Simi CNC Rostock Max V3 has a nickel for price per cubic centimeter whereas the Raise 3D N2 Plus is just a penny more at six cents per cubic centimeter. The N2 Plus is $2,500 more than the Simi CNC Rostock Max V3, and that's three times the price. But the N2 Plus build volume is 34,600 cubic centimeters larger than the Rostock. 
Okay, so this is interesting because there's only a penny difference and it's a nickel and six cents. So you know that we're starting to see printers that charge less per cubic centimeter of build volume. At more than three times the price, but not three times the build volume, you know that the prices aren't scaling in your favor and it may be better to buy the cheaper offering, but it's completely and totally up to you. This again is just trying to get you more informed before you make your purchasing decision. Well, now let's take a look at a printer manufacturer who has multiple offerings. The Robo R2 is 15 cents per cubic centimeter of build volume, whereas the Robo C2, its lower cost offering, is 34 cents per cubic centimeter of build volume. The R2 is $700 more than the C2, but the build volume of the R2 is more than four times the size that of the C2. So this is super interesting because the R2 and the C2 are offered from Robo. The R2 itself has a 15 cents per cubic centimeter build volume. The C2 is less expensive and the C2 is the lower cost offering from Robo, but you're paying more than twice per cubic centimeter of build volume. So if you look at these numbers, the R2 is a much, much better deal than the C2. All right, finally, let's, let's do an interesting comparison. A lot of the resellers have asked us to compare the Anet E10 3D printer with the CR10 3D printer. The CR10 from Creality was an amazingly popular offering with lots and lots and lots of people trying to get this printer. In the emails about the Anet E10, I was told to reference it along with the CR10 and compare it to the CR10, but is that printer really worth the comparison to the CR10? Let's go to the numbers. The Anet E10 is two cents per cubic centimeter of build volume, whereas the Creality CR10 is a penny per cubic centimeter of build volume. The CR10 is $123 more than the E10, but the CR10 build volume is two times that of the Anet E10. We see by these numbers that the penny and the two cents per cubic centimeter of build volume is incredibly low. So no matter what, we're comparing two very aggressively priced 3D printers. But when you look at the numbers and see that the build volume of the CR10 is twice that of the E10 and it's not twice the price of the E10, you know that the CR10 versus the E10 is still the much better deal. Okay, well, what have we learned from all of this? Well, on one side, uh, small format 3D printers are quite expensive for what they deliver. The build volume is way more expensive than the build volume of the large format 3D printers. But on the other hand, they are less expensive than their big brothers, and usually that means more people can afford them. So even though the price of the build volume is more expensive, the build volume is so small that we're having a low cost 3D printer that more people can afford. On the other hand also, it looks like large format 3D printers are the way to go as far as the price for the build volume. We have the Creality CR10 at a penny per cubic centimeter of build volume. That's just insane. And the GMAX G-Create 1.5 XT Plus, one of the printers that I have, while it's still more expensive than the CR10 by a few thousand dollars, it's still only three cents per cubic centimeter of build volume. That's because the build area is so much larger than the CR10 itself. Obviously, the price per cubic centimeter of a 3D printer isn't all that defines its value set. You have to look in to see what the feature set is, plus you really have to adhere to your own budget. However, I think that knowing this information is really great, and knowing the price per cubic centimeter of build volume is a great way to initially think about a printer, to group them into buy or won't buy, or look into, or it's just more information to arm yourself on the value of a 3D printer so that you can get the best bang for your 3D printing buck. Well, that's it from here. Thanks for watching, I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe because I want you to be notified when cool stuff comes out. A big thanks to all my patrons who support me at patreon.com, I really appreciate that. And finally, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you. And as always, math is awesome and high five.